Hey, everyone, welcome to 996 The Howl for the Uninitiated. This is an unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes. That was a close one. I was already ready to I was ready to shut off the game when it was three nothing, like four minutes left. I was ready, I was like content that the Coyotes won the game. But uh, Dallas managed to come back to make it three two, but thankfully the Coyotes prevailed with a three two victory and a must win. You know, I'm not really so dramatic or apocalyptic. Um, that's not my style, but this was a this was a must win. For the Arizona Coyotes, um, they played in an afternoon Saturday game, and a lot of the teams that they're chasing played before them with uh, St. Louis and Colorado, and even the LA Kings, uh, managing managing to get points. And the Coyotes found themselves six six points out of the wild card spot before their game, so it was a must win. They couldn't drop. I, I think they can't draw more than four points out of the spot. It's just um, it would be too much to leapfrog so many teams to get to that wild card spot. So thankfully the Coyotes win. They're still four points back of the wild card spot. They're two points back of Vancouver, who's just uh, above them in the Pacific. They're tied with Edmonton. They're two points up on LA and the Ducks, who are last. So it's a whole mess. But the Coyotes just need to focus and grab as many points as they can. They're, they were on a five-game losing streak, which cannot happen at this time of year. But thankfully, the Coyotes got right back on track this Saturday. And uh, what turned it around, to be honest, I think it was the return of Jacob Chikrin, who did not play the past four games after the bye week and all-star break. And it really solidifies the decor, and it helps to penalty kill, and it helps the power play. Really, I think Jacob Chikrin just makes his team like 10% better just because he plays on the power play. He, uh, I'm pretty sure he plays on the PK, but if he doesn't, I'm not 100% sure. I'm sorry. But if he doesn't, you know, Chikrin is a top paired, uh, is a second paired defenseman. Talkin usually pairs him with Goligoski. And uh, he, they, Talkit has faith in Chikrin, and him and Goligoski play, play really well together. So Talkit's not afraid to throw them out there against a the top line, which uh, takes some stress off of Ekman Larson and Jomerson, so they don't have to play over 27 minutes a night. So that helps Jomerson and Ekman Larson, you know, have more uh, energy on the PK, and maybe that's why the PK was pretty much perfect against Dallas on Saturday, but against Columbus and against Dallas on Monday was pretty bad. And even the power play, um, the power play scored two goals on Saturday, and when against Columbus and Dallas on Monday, it was pretty, pretty terrible that um, they kind of lost games because their power play was really bad and their PK too. So I think just Chikrin in the lineup as that second paired slotted defenseman. Um, Talkin doesn't have to overplay Osterley. He doesn't have to overplay Kanaden. And he doesn't have to overplay Ekman Larson and Jomerson too much to shut down the team's top, the opposing team's top line. So I really love Chikrin. Um, he's great defensively. Even though he's looked at as more of an offensive D-man, um, I really think he stabilizes the Coyotes' decor, and I'm glad he's back. And I ho hope that uh, he's back for the rest of the season. This guy's missed. This guy has missed too much time as an Arizona Coyote, and that's it. It was a great win by Coyotes. Alex Galchenyuk needs to play like that every game. I thought the team just played a great, compact, consistent 60-minute game. Players which I would like to see play a bit better would be Christian Fisher, Clayton Keller, and Jordan Wheel. Wheel's been really quiet since the Cowboys acquired him, but he's more of a defensive forward who wins face-offs. Clayton Keller is getting assists here and there, but I really think he should start becoming that game-breaking type player that we need him to be. And Christian Fisher has just had an awful stretch of games the past two to three to four weeks um, he's got to get it going. I'm not sure what's wrong with him. Kraus is basically a way better Christian Fisher, but plays on the fourth line. So I wonder what happens, you know, with Chaika and Talkit, um, with with Fisher. But that's it. This is not a clickbait video. The title actually is sincere. I have a 
quick get rich quick scheme for all of you all of you out there you ready for this let's go this is from the coyotes discord this is not me doing research um, if you're not in the Coyotes Discord, I encourage you to join it. I always link it in my description for every video. If the link doesn't work, tell me. Tell me it doesn't work. But uh, you should go there. It's like MSN, but it's all Coyotes fans. And we have a great time during games in the chat. So here we go. Kyle Capo Bianco makes $70,000 in salary playing for the Tucson Roadrunners in the American Hockey League. It's a daily rate of $360, so he makes $360 every day. He got called up by the Coyotes, so because the Coyotes are in the NHL, believe it or not, he makes $675,000 salary if he was on the NHL roster for 82 games. So that is $3,600 a day being on the NHL roster. So $3,600 being on the Coyotes, $360 being on the Tucson Roadrunners. That's a big discrepancy. So, what happened? Kyle Capel Bianco gets called up by the Coyotes and gets an, a season ending injury in his second game for the Coyotes and he's placed on injured reserve which means he gets paid the NHL salary for the rest of the season so how much money is he making because he got injured on the Coyotes compared to if he played every single game for the Tucson Roadrunners $190,000 so regularly for 82 game for whatever how many games the AHL plays in their season he makes 70 grand but because he got injured on the Coyotes for the next 25 games that the NHL plays 25 27 games that the Coyotes have left he's going to make $190,000 which is which is like two and a half times his base salary in, in the American Hockey League. So if you want to get rich right away, just be really okay at hockey, just get drafted. All you have to do is get drafted by an NHL team, play on the AHL roster, play good enough just to get called up. Just to get called up and you'll make way more money. And then if you manage to get game time, just injure yourself, just break a leg. Just break something so you can't play anymore, and then you're forced to get paid uh, NHL salary, and you become rich, and that's what happened to Kyle Capo Bianco because this team is ridiculous with their injuries. So that was a little bit tongue in cheek, but you know how it is. So thank you for watching. <laughs> thank you for your support.